Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Heidi. How, Heidi, how are you? I was looking up and just admiring the moon already tonight. I've been noticing it's getting fuller and fuller and bigger and bigger. It's amazing. Hi, Lexi and Gregor. How are you? So, sorry for my delay if you were watching for me. Here's the deal. This is the irony of life, right? I got distracted by nature. It wasn't a squirrel, but that's one of the cutest movies ever if you haven't seen it. Um, that movie, Up. Has anybody out there seen Up? Squirrel, you know, with the dog and the voice box is the coolest thing. So tell me how my video is, how my, my sound, everybody's good. I see the hearts. I love you all. Hi, Amanda and Jess, J, J, S, E. I love that. That's so cute, by the way. Buddy has this amazing little bed layout over here. If he stays in his position, this might be the hard part is getting to stay in where he was. But it looks like he's got like a blank, like a big old bed of seaweed that's all nice and soft and plush. And uh, we're along the waterfront here. If you couldn't see the sea behind me. Hi, Nikki, honey. How are you, dear? He's, he's like banana boy we call we're starting to call buddy banana boy ciao leonello come stai so oh man he's gonna make me have to walk over there and pick him up out of the he's what he's doing is the saltiness the saltiness of the sea is in that seaweed that seabed and so he's kind of like all like Ugh, you know <laughs> when you have salt what do you do you crave more salt and you lose your senses and your taste bud. The more salt you have, the more you're adding because you can no longer taste it. And well, it's the same with dogs. And you know, like they, we had a, a we had a pony, and we had a goat growing up, along with a, a cow and a bull. And so, interestingly enough, we had one of those big lo those blocks of salt, that, so they could lick it for. I guess supposed to, supposed to be for when you're dehydrated or when you're you get them to drink water and all that. It's it's kind of a crazy dynamic, but anyway, we had one of those, and even us humans, what do we do? We we add salt to things. And when I lived in Italy, for example, the further south you got, the more salt everybody added to their food. Not that you needed it; it was just that oversensitization. And and some will say because you sweat out, you can't digest salt. Salt is actually something that has to be exhibited through the sweat. It doesn't digest in our bodies, but um, it's very taxing on the kidneys and the and the um, adrenals. So yeah, and I, I've been reading a lot more about salt anyway because of my um, yoga teacher training. One of Yogi Bhajan's teachings talks about how <laughs> I have to keep my eye on him. I'm telling you, he's, he, he, find, he finds all sorts of stuff and now he's crunching on something. Hi, Kristen. How are you? The salt, it can cause so much. It's really bad for the circulatory system. It, I mean, but you got to listen to your body anyway. Um, sometimes we think we need to add it, but in reality, what we don't recognize is that we just don't taste things like we used to. I don't know. Um, but I don't know. Celery is probably the best substitute. You don't need salt. You just eat celery. Don't you notice the saltiness of celery? It's its own natural form of sodium intake, the kind that your body needs. So, um, but getting off of that subject, because that wasn't the purpose of this video, by the way. Oh, oh, he's, oh, this is crazy. He's crazy. He's just dog on banana crack. It is the funniest thing. Oh, Lexi, I can imagine. 80s? Oh, please. She's probably telling you, like, sister, I got, I don't know how much time I got to live, and I just want to enjoy myself. And that's the irony, isn't it? In life, we think, I'm going to live my life. You know, this is actually part of the conversation. So today was goddess group day. So I, I was hanging with my goddesses, had an amazing, amazing day, celebrating, ceremony, ritual. And what I found, hi, Melina, thank you. You know what, though, Melina? Always remember one thing. People say, everything in moderation, but even moderation in moderation. And sometimes that's the crutch to validate the rationale behind 
the addiction or the need to reach for or say, oh, I, I'm going to do that because I don't do it that often and in moderation. But sometimes we don't even recognize that we're just, we're just using that, you know. Ciao, ciao. So, um, yeah, okay, going back to goddesses. Goddesses was amazing. I'm very blessed. I have amazing women in my life, great mentors, great skilled healers, and uh, just wise women as, as we all are. We're all wise. We're just, you know, at different stages in our life and our evolution. We all bring something to the table. It's very interesting that we should ever be able to look to anybody and say, you can teach me everything I need to know, that you're my mentor for my entire life. I, I personally would like to think that each of us is going to come in and go. There may be people that stay in your life for longer periods during longer growth and evolution in your life, but even still, we're, we're always going to go through, you know, like the waves, and you can hear them in the background. And so we can never put anyone else on a pedestal I think it's important that you never idolize anyone or anything and that's truth for me so perfectionism and duality today's you know the theme that we are working on the ritual was about duality and what is the biggest duality that we tend to notice? It's between the masculine and the feminine, but people will recognize it as the male versus the female. When in the reality of that, we all embody the masculine and the feminine. Men, women, one could appear to be more physically masculine, but could be more f feminine internally in their behaviors and in their being. Or just like women, we may appear to be feminine but we may be masculine in our behaviors and our being. And so here's where the duality, and I, if you, any of you have been following me for a while and seen any of my old videos, I, I've spoken about, about contrast, about the pendulum swinging in life, about how you wouldn't recognize anything in this life as good or bad had you not swung on exactly the yin and the yang, same thing, the true and the false, the positive and the negative, they don't exist without each other and they don't exist alone because they're just imbalances and extremes. You know, that was a woman on her phone just walking by with her dog. That was kind of cute. And so we wouldn't notice contrast if there wasn't an imbalance in things. We wouldn't notice something was nice or or mean or good or bad unless we extreme we experience those extremes so i know for example when we talk about the perfectionism effect for example perfectionism is most of the time our biggest procrastinator causes us to be distracted from being present because we want things so perfect we won't get out of the visionary box to look around and see that the perfection is in the imperfection and I know I'm a recovering perfectionist, I talked about this the other day, that yeah, there's a lot of things I would like a certain way, but you know, if a rich life isn't even existing unless you've had your ups and downs. And so you could say practice makes perfect, and that can go either way, either way, whoever you pronounce that too, right? Practice makes perfect can be the practicing the same bad habit over and over again, addiction, whatever it is, and it can be perfectionism, or it can be focusing on something that's creating a new habit that is, um, it is promoting you versus demoting you. So this is how you can recognize the difference between addiction and not, not you know, a healthy habit. We can be addicted to healthy habits too. It's better to have a healthy habit addict addiction than it is to have an unhealthy habit and addiction but see again here's in a duality this is playing into it as always so you can go to one extreme or the other but eventually you got to come back to that neutral point and recognize how's this serving me if i'm a perfectionist but i'm swinging way off over here into my perfectionism role how am i ever going to witness the beauty of life on the other side right so it's better it's better to swing in those extremes 
because you're going to find yourself eventually in that neutral space of recognizing it. And I think maybe that's why some of us, and I'm, I'm one of them, have had to go through such extreme lessons in order to recognize that huge disparity, that huge difference between this and that. But see, this is a conversation I was having with a beautiful goddess sister of mine. She's reading a, um, uh, I'm going to have to take that away from him. This is ugly. Oh, goodness, buddy, stop it. Stop. All right. We're having a bottle cap issue, apparently. He is just chewing like a crazy dog. Are you done with that? Please tell me you're done with that. He literally will pick up stuff and bring it home with him. It is the funniest thing to watch. <laughs> As I recap, the, go- the conversation I was having with my goddess sister was that I did a Monday hook em once and I was reading from either Osho or one of my other books and I'm pretty sure it was Osho, Osho or something else. Yeah, and he truly does, he does teach love, let me tell you, because you, you don't want your dogs to eat anything that's going to cause them harm either. When we choose this or that, now here's where the pendulum swinging gets interesting. You can hang out to this other extreme and that's causing you to deny the rest of that flow. So somebody reached out on my my post earlier asking about even accepting our scars that are self-induced. And anybody out there who has experienced this, and I did, I've inflicted a lot of self-harm on myself. I haven't spoken about it. You know, I, I did talk about it in a video before about I have attempted suicide. I did it many, many years ago. I did it off and on over the course of my adolescence, my teen years specifically. But it didn't serve and I knew in my heart and soul that that was not something I wanted to, you know, to actually do. I I just was at such despair and depression and anxiety and frustration in my life that I felt like I just wanted to end it all there. But then there was also that little spark in me that said, what about the people I leave behind and the mess I leave behind? And mostly because I also had very close friends that had committed suicide that were near and dear to me that I, I, you know, caused me pain just seeing that happen and how I felt as a result of them taking their own lives. But I have compassion from both, both sides. So when we choose, again, if you're on the extreme end of your pendulum swinging, because this is part of life, we are always going to be swinging or we're going to come to that neutral space. We're going to come back to the center, the groundedness, the, okay, this is, this is where the silence is. This is the calm. So we were talking about the breath at, at goddesses. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling. Right? Same thing. But there's those pauses between the, inhale and the pauses between the exhale that when you reach those pauses the breath is still there there's just not the contrast from the inhale to the exhale as just as i'm saying when you're swinging on a pendulum when you're really in different stages of your life when you're going to this extreme and then over to this extreme to see those contrasts to see the duality is the only way you'll ever come back to the reality. And I say reality because those wouldn't exist without each other, but when you come to the central point of power, that reality is the just being, the acceptance of both, and they won't exist if you're right here, right now, and you're present in the moment, because duality only exists when it's imbalanced. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? The contrast. That's when you know if you've gone to different extremes in your life and you've lived a rich, full life, it wasn't a life of perfectionism. It was a life of really grabbing life by the horns and just riding it and saying, I'm not going to attach to the 
perfect vision anymore. I'm just going to go with it and see what unfolds. A lot of people will see daredevils, for example, you know, like extreme sports and things like that. Because guess what? They're living, they're putting it out there. They're going there. They're willing to put their life at a certain risk of living to feel it fully. Sometimes, and see, and this will go back to addiction because you, we will vacillate. And the only way we're ever going to know how extreme we've been is to just do it. I'm not advocating anything in particular, by the way. Extreme can also be self-sabotage, but only you know that, right? I've done this where I'm like, I'm just going to go for it. And I'm so grateful I did. Because where would you get the lesson without trying, without putting yourself out there, without taking the effort to getting out of your comfort zone? I'm a perfectionist at heart and not because... I want to be. It's, it was in my nature. It was a coping mechanism that I developed when I was younger. That things like cleaning around my bedroom, which became my meditation, for example, I would get into a space and just keep moving. And that for me was the way I felt safe and secure and controlled over my environment, my situations in life. And so I've learned over the years, and I've dropped a lot of my perfectionism. Some people may notice it and some people may not. I know people who have seen me over the years since I was much, much younger would definitely tell you the differences, the contrast, the variations of this Lana that exists now. Even people at my yoga studio, for example, that have told me in a year's time they've seen a huge difference in me. I can look at my videos and see a huge difference in myself. I know I'm much calmer. I know I'm not as attached to certain things that I was before. And yes, my perfect vision, I'm releasing more and more every single day that which is not serving me. That when I hold certain things really tightly, I'm just finding that it's, it's causing me more tension and anguish and anger and frustration. And it's an internal issue that that's the bigger problem it's not the external it's the internal dialogue that I work on because that's what creates the external stuff and the more I've just said okay I can be calm here I can find the peace the stillness inside the birds are overhead I can find that calm and stillness the peace inside myself and watch around me and witness what is really truly going on is a reflection of whatever's going on inside of myself. And so one of the conversations we were having when I first arrived and a couple of us were standing around speaking was regarding, okay, I'm not a big politics talker, but just the discussion about how maybe what we're seeing out there in politics is to remind us how much we really do care. And that even those, these people that anger us and frustrate us and we want to point a finger, three fingers pointing back to ourselves. And I love that my girlfriend always reminds me about this because truly, when we can put, point a finger out, there's always going to be three back. We can say we dislike that, but what is it inside of us that is really a mirror that is also part of that? Because we're all contributing to the whole. We can't separate. We can, again, duality. You can't accept the good without the bad. Because the bad is what makes you good. And the good is what makes the bad stand out. So we really need to hone in on our own stuff. Not worry about that stuff out there. I know people will say, but that's not real life. And blah, you're all airy-fairy and you know, talking all like it's, it's easy for you. And I'm going to tell you, I was the first person to tell you that was my ego. My will was so strong that I didn't want to hear the poo poo. Oh, you just, you should just be happy. Don't let someone steal your joy and, and don't worry about them because I was so attached to my perfect, my perfectionism the way that somebody else should treat me that I wasn't recognizing that the perfectionism was 
projection on someone else. That even though I wanted others to treat me a certain way, I wasn't doing it for myself. And all of this is part of the big picture. Perfectionism, we project that stuff. Okay, I just was saying it, and I didn't say the word. We project that shit on people. And that's dirty. That's dirty. I'm saying that from the kindest way in my heart. It's, not, it's totally unkind to expect anybody to be able to live up to your own self-inflicted pain and suffering of what you feel others should be doing that you hold yourself to. So I hold myself to a certain level, a bar. My idea that other people should meet me there and be at my level is completely, I mean, that's, that's what we call egocentric, right? That's when <laughs> we think we're better than people. And here's one thing I've learned through all of my spiritual and my yogic and all my meditation and my trainings, but, but my own personal experience. You have to love people where they're at and not hold them to your expectations of you. And that's probably one of our hardest things to sever. Because most of the times we think, oh, well, I'm trying to help people. And so we can, oh, I'm, I'm like all this, I'm, I'm a good person because I'm helping people. But are you helping yourself first is always going to be the first question I'll ask. Because helping others is just taking you out of confronting and looking at your own stuff. And the reason that you want to help those other people is because it's an aspect in yourself that you also probably need help with that I've this I'm speaking from a personal experience here that I've I've done this that you'll say well I don't want someone to suffer the way I suffered through such and such but that's not your job to project They're your perfectionism of how you think other people shouldn't go through their own lessons and walks of life and for me I think the hardest one was to recognize that when you've achieved a certain level of awareness and understanding in your own self your own being and you have someone else in your life or other people in your life or circumstances and you feel that they should correct they should self-correct you need to point you feel the need to point things out for them i found when you're as as in a, this is not a down talk but when you're at a higher level of vibration of awareness and mindfulness in your own stuff that gives you no right to put anyone down. It gives you no right to point out their faults or their failures. It also gives you no right to try to get them to fix themselves. Because really, you're in a higher level. If you're able to witness it, you need to hold the space for that person and be the higher person. You, you have a moral obligation to show up and inspire through your own inspired living. Truly set the example not be a perfectionist about how others should be living their life. Look at that. That's so cool. I love that. I got the sun in my hand and the palm of my hand. You, you have to really truly be the higher person to not fall back into old habits and routines. Because that's what I've learned in my own personal life and experience, especially over the past few years. That there have been times I'll see someone... I'll be just like, how come they can't get this? And my dialogue in my mind or even conversation in the past has been, what the heck? Why can't they figure this out? What the, why can't they get this? You know, why don't they understand this? Because they have different ex experiences, beliefs, and patterns that are totally different than yours. Nobody has had the same life experience. We can relate. We can have similar conversations. We can connect on stuff. But the reality is, is we all come with different baggage, different stuff. And that stuff is meant to serve us individually. We're not here to say, hey, look at my stuff. This should teach you. This should help you. No, that's for you. And you can share your stories, as I do, just for, just for example, I use. But again, we all have our lessons to learn. And we're not here to fix anyone. And so perfectionism, duality, 
it's an inside job too and we have to recognize how extreme we can get with swinging in those different directions but to also honor every aspect of ourselves that there is no such thing as bad that it really is all good in the sense of the two combined because how would you know one without the other it's like sweet and salty it's like it's the birds it's looking up in the sky and seeing clouds how could you see clouds if there wasn't the contrast of the sky behind it or the sea with the ripples in the in the water right the waves that crash along the shore and when how would you notice the that meeting point when they kiss right isn't that a beautiful divine thing to to behold to witness to be a part of that that's what this life is all about is really about seeing it and appreciating all of it so when we're in that perfectionist mode we're in extreme contrast we're in extreme duality aren't we anything but what is our perfect vision doesn't look good because we're so up in here we'll never catch sight of what's all in this vast space right i mean we have a vast amount available to us of experiences why not behold it all right hey animals I was, here's one of the reasons I got squirreled earlier, and this is kind of comical because I'm not quite sure, I've not really paid attention as much recently. When I was younger, my sisters and I would watch the lizards. And here in Florida, those of you living in the Florida area, hi Ava, hi Lynn. It is hilarious to watch the lizards, but apparently it must be mating season, and I, I tend to slip out of my mind and forget about these things probably all year round, but it's a little cooler. So there's, there were two lizards and they were huge lizards and they were going at it like what appeared to be fighting so I wasn't sure it could have been two males trying to fight for territory and they they locked you know their their little beaks or whatever they're called their little jaws together I was just thinking that was the coolest thing so I sp I have to admit I spent a good 15 minutes watching them and I did a little video too but that was how curious and kind of cool it was to watch so I was watching that in nature that what may appear might not actually be, right? So I'm not even sure. It could have been a mating dance and ritual. I'll have to look it up on YouTube or something. Or maybe it was a fight. But maybe those are two things that are extreme fighting. Who knows? This is the, the interesting thing about life is we don't know everything we witness through our eyes. But because we come from different backgrounds and experiences, we could only compare, judge the contrast of what we've experienced and project upon that vision what we're seeing and say, well, this is what it looks like based on my experience. This is what it appears to be because I don't know. So how many of us are willing to admit I don't know? There's a lot of things I don't know. And I think it's very common in normal dialogue with other people that we'll say, yeah, I know, but we really don't mean we know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I have to laugh because Tom will joke, Tom will say that I do this because I admit I do this. Sometimes I'll say I know and maybe I don't know, but it's just a habit of saying it. And I think it's funny because I have to remind myself when I lived in Slovakia, and this could be a little bit of the reason it's a habit, in Slovakia, do you know how they say yes? Or how they say no? So I said this with my mother one time. She said, why do you keep saying yes, no? Because in Slovakia, yes is a no. And the, when you hear them say it quickly enough and as a slang, you'll hear a no. And they're really saying a no, which means yes. And so I really, my mom was like, oh my gosh, you're killing me. And my mother's very much about proper language. I grew up with kind of the, the English grammar Nazi of a mom. And I love her dearly. She's really amazing. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be able to articulate as well as I feel I can now. 
And because with my mother and I having conversations over the years, she would correct me, which, and it, anybody else would think it was super harsh, but it just, it was her way of showing love to help me, to show she cared, that with the, her way of correcting me, she knew it was serving me. And that's just the way that, you know, sometimes parents will serve. It may not appear loving, but it is their form of love. So correcting me, my mother would correct me in ways that kept me more precise and clearer in my communication. How often do we recognize our communication is an issue? I know one of the beautiful things that she taught me, and it's part of the reflective listening communication where you hear someone say something and you clarify asking, is this what I understood? Is this what you meant? Here's what I heard. Is this what you were trying to convey? Reflective listening is super huge if you want to, in, you want to maintain, because otherwise you're going to be left off in the dust and people lose connection. You know, that's usually what causes the biggest conflict in any relationship. And so I remember even in the military, people would assume that a fact was a fact when most of the times it was an opinion or hearsay. So people didn't always clarify things. And my mother, used, she taught me one thing. If somebody ever tells you, you always do something. And so this is part of that duality conversation because it's really important that you get clear. Because again, we can go to those extremes and you want to ensure See, this is part of that embracing this, um, this web of inclusion. We all want to be included in conversation, dialogue, and communication is also about, it's, it's not always verbal, but it's also body language. It's, it's actions that we take, right? Um, I don't mind you commenting at all, Lexi, darling. You can, you can all, please, in the comments, if you have any questions for me, put them down and I'm going to scroll through. I truly enjoy reading through all your comments. It, it brightens up my day and I love interacting. And I would really like to collaborate with some of you and see where you're at. And maybe like, you know, I can just sit and listen and see where you're at and you want to share your story and maybe you want me to, I don't know, give you some feedback. That's, I'm, not, I'm just offering that. So she would say to me, if somebody ever accuses you of always doing something or all the time or whenever you do, this is, here's the reason why. My mother, it was a big trigger growing up. We'd say, mom, why do you always do that? And she'd say, what? And then we'd say, well, you do this. Give me an example is the first thing she would say. And of course, what happens when someone catches you off guard and expects you to present them with an example of something you're claiming they do all the time? We have, to be, we have to learn to be clearer that if we're willing to accuse someone of something, we also have to be willing to back it up. But then here's the thing. Why are we writing lists to begin with? Why are we accusing people? If you can be clear on your communication, you should never get to the point where you say you're always doing something or something bothers you. Right? So again, there's this idea of projecting that we don't want to speak sometimes because of fear of being rejected. And so clear communication, duality. And that's one of the things I love about my goddess sisters. We have such amazing conversations and we're able to grow and learn from one another. And today it was about balancing that masculine and feminine, the duality and bringing in the healing for all. We all embody both the masculine and the feminine. They're not separate. It's the unity of the two together that is going to make us all more balanced and whole. And so that means embracing every part of yourself and not trying to push it or suppress it away and, get, and, and try to get by. We all want a rich life. And sometimes it's really going to be from extreme to extreme, but just embrace that and don't don't label it because again that's part of the perfectionism is we have to have labels the bells and whistles of life you know oh that's good and that's bad again perfectionism is probably the biggest cause of suffering because it keeps you from living a full rich life 
Now I feel I've had a pretty full rich life and I've had friends tell me my life sounded so amazing to them. But I can tell you probably will be a lot richer now because I've dropped a lot of my expectations of how it's supposed to look and be. I have this big old pot up. I, I held back in my life a lot. I was probably over conservative in a lot of areas. And then I went to the extremes on the other side, right? <laughs> I love the bunny hop song. But truly, I, I'm very grateful because if I hadn't had those experiences, those extreme moments in my life, I wouldn't be where I'm at today and be able to appreciate just the calm, even in the chaos, because I can see that there's beauty in it all now more than ever before. Hi, Rhonda. How are you, honey? My mom's asking for a singing bunny toy that sings the bunny hop. How does that song go, Mr. Was it something about do do? It's been a while. Do, uh, the, mm, I'm not even gonna try because I can't remember the words. It's Cottontail, Peter Cottontail, hopping along the bunny trail, hippity hop, hippity hop. Am I getting it? Ah, oh, I don't know. I just channeled in. I don't know. It's it's been a while. Hmm. So I actually am, I said actually a lot today, sorry. But my neck, uh, my neck is so, so tight right in here. It hurts so bad. Oh, like I wanna just stretch it out and, and then it's going down my shoulder. And I did go to the chiropractor on Monday and it made a huge, huge difference, but I was so stiff yesterday. Here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping along the buddy ta trail. Not on his tail. Hmm. Now the lighting gets a lot brighter, right? Because the sun is about to set. Ah. I love this time of day. It's like the perfect weather. We had a nice hot day again today, so I'm like, yay! I got to wear a dress. I was feeling all dressed up in goddessy today. Yeah, my, my ladies are very special. I really highly encourage all of you who, wherever you live, if you don't have a goddess group, a group of women that can come together and hold sacred space for one another, be the one to create it. I highly encourage that. I didn't create this one. I just got very blessed for the people that, that brought me into it. Yeah, it is, Kristen. It really is. Uh, hi Ariel, how are you? Yeah, let me know if you end up coming down this way, any, any of you. In fact, I want to put this out to you because I'm really excited about it. I'm actually getting ready to start up the level two conscious communication class. I'll be doing that. And, and I've been working on it already, but I, hey, as far as I'm concerned, communication can always use more honing and skills. You know, we're a practice and practicing, practicing, and if you are always in that state of fear of making a mistake, which is a perfectionism, I know, you're afraid to say something so you don't say anything at all, and that's even worse because most of the times you hold back, you hold back, you hold back, then when you say something, it's like, oh, that wasn't such a big deal, now was it? Why was I so worried about what I was going to say? And it's old patterns, and it's the fear of rejection, in my case, why I would do something like that. or. Those of you who are perfectionists and want to learn another language, if you're not willing to try to speak it, which can be the other extreme there too, right? I'm afraid I'm going to say it the wrong way. Hey, if you make a mistake, it's okay. How do you think you're going to correct it? You won't know if you don't try. And that's what perfectionism, as I was saying earlier, perfectionism will hold you back in your life. How are you going to grow? You've got to make mistakes along the way. And that is the success in life to begin with. Success is finding that the mistake was the success to guide you in another direction. My girlfriend and I were talking. She's had a lot of health issues. And, I, and she was relating to me because of what I've been through between the gluten, the wheat, um, the, the pineapples and, and the soy and all these other crazy foods that I have to avoid. That she, she's having to figure out what's going on in her physical body. And she'd already gone through cancer and some other things in, in her, 
her, and then hope she doesn't mind, I'm not going to say names, um, that I'm sharing this. Uh, so it's, I, I don't, yeah. And so the beauty of, of what we were discussing was about specifically not labeling things. Now, I'm one of those people who can be so caught up in my head. Now, you can be a hypochondriac is where this conversation was, what this was about. Um, we can be so caught up in our head that we're trying to figure things out and we're trying to find out and we're doing the research and we're going to doctors and getting the tests done that we're creating more problem and dis-ease in the body. And then if it didn't, if it was one place here that's not working and this doesn't work and something's happening here, why not focus on what is working? Focus on what is so healthy in you that you don't notice what you feel is unhealthy. See, this is, again, that pendulum swinging, and this is where the duality is huge. If you only notice what's wrong, you'll never see what's right. So when you're looking at the contrast in your own life and the life around you, focus in, hone in. This is, this is the golden nugget of the video is my feeling, personally. Notice what's working. If you have 90% of the most beautiful life, but you're so fixated on the 10% over there that's just, uh, it makes you mad and it makes you angry and it makes you want to spit fire, how are you going to enjoy that 90%? That's an extreme I don't think any of us want. But the only way you'll notice it is if you actually step back and recognize where is my attention and my energy? Where is my attention going that the energy is feeding and fueling and flowing? That the more I'm fixated, the more I'm focused on my discomfort, I'm dissing the comfort that already exists. That the reality is there's so much beauty in the world. We can find it if we choose to. No matter what you're going through out there, like I said, I'm here. Whatever you're going through in life, you have to be willing to own your thoughts and your focus. If your focus is so much on what's not working, you're going to lose out on your life entirely. And that's why I was saying earlier and why I made the meme for the perfectionism is procrastination. It's holding you back from your optimal living and the fullness and the richness of growth and their purpose and divinity in this life. We didn't come here to get stuck in the tre trenches. Now, we wouldn't experience and appreciate the beauty without that, but nobody said you need to be stuck in it. Look at the lotus. The lotus flower, it grows out of the mud. But we look only at the beauty of that lotus, don't we? So appreciate it all because it's all serving. It is all serving. You may be in the mud, but look at the beauty that you are. That's perfectionism and imperfection. That's the true nature of this life. And how you can hone in. <sighs> mm. Drop the labels. Look at what is working. Appreciate what it is that is the beauty of your life. Focus on that, that, that gift. And even if you're one of those people who claims, well, I got 90% crap going on and I got 10% goodness over here. You can shift that if you shift your focus. Because a lot of times the 90% good is completely overlooked that you think it's 90% bad and it really is 90% good. Or you know what? Does it really matter? Where attention goes, energy flows. Shift your focus. Focus on what's working, no matter what it is in your life. The more gratitude and appreciation you have, because there we go again, that's what appreciates, or the attention, that's, it's going to grow it. And the only way you're going to shift it is with your focus of it. Mm-hmm. It's all serving. Take that good with the bad. I will. I'll take it every day, all day. 
And so, yeah, I've had this conversation in intimate detail, and I think it's something that everybody should have. That if there's someone, here's my challenge to all of you today, because I think it's really important, especially right now, especially with this Mercury retrograde, which is all about communication. If you have anything in your life, any person that you are having a dis- disagreement, maybe you're not talking. Be the higher person today. Reach out to that person with compassion in your heart as you would want done for you. Bite your humility in the ass. Be kind to yourself and don't hold any resentment toward anyone. Reach out to those people in your life that maybe you had a falling out with and, and, and appreciate them in the, in the way that says, you know, I'm sorry this happened, but I want you to know how much I appreciate what you bring and the, the richness that I feel because you're a part of my life. And give them, give them feedback and tell them, this is what I love about you. You don't know what that could do. That would be huge. You could really make someone's day today. Reach out to somebody, whether you're in a disagreement, you're falling out, or even if it's somebody you just haven't talked to in a long time. Pick up the phone, send a text, send an email, whatever it is that is your form of communication, maybe go show up at their door. Bring them flowers. Say, hey, you know what? I was thinking of you lovingly. And I wanted to reach out and let you know how much I appreciate you. And that maybe this happened, but I value you and I see the value you bring to me being in my life. I think that would be huge. Because I know I value and appreciate all of you. I love you all, actually. I really, truly do in my heart. And and I do put a, a daily prayer for all of the rock and rad stars and everybody who's in my life because how would my my life be so enriched without you so thank you for showing up Mm, thank you for those of you who share this video share any of my videos i really appreciate it i try to say thank you all the time and if i've missed you at any point i apologize i will try my hardest to keep and catch up because there's a lot going on I got a dog, I got to walk home. Have an amazingly blessed, blessed Wednesday. I kind of had a little joking laugh. Because, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hump day. And we got Peter Cottontail hopping along that bunny trail. I was a funny humping bunny earlier. Hey, it's hump day. It's wet Wednesday. We're coming up. I'm in a full moon. The lizards are humping. It is mating season. How funny is that? (laughs) Don't read into that, by the way. It's just my silliness. Because you know that comes out to play every once in a while. So, please, for your own self and your own sanity, your own kindness, drop the perfectionism. If you can, try. Try. Try as hard as you may. It might you may find your life gets a lot more exciting when your vision is not so attached, right? I love you. Have an amazing evening. Get wet.